Hi everyone, it's Cheryl. Uh, it's Monday and I hope you all had a good weekend and I hope you're ready to watch me make a mess and I'm betting today is going to be a mess. So anyway, I have been getting into junk journals and dyeing paper and that and so I was cruising around Pinterest this morning looking for new and different ways to dye paper. Now I mean I do the tea dye, the coffee dye, but I was looking for some other ways. I know you can do it with Kool-Aid. I haven't tried that yet, but I'm going to. But anyway, I found a coffee dye that's supposed to be make a more aged, grungy looking dye than just your regular instant coffee. So I'm going to start with that one while my coffee's hot that I made. So anyway, what they said for this was one cup of water, two teaspoons of instant coffee, and a teaspoon of vanilla. So we're going to try that one first. So I'm going to take... And this is where the mess is going to happen. Get a paper towel. I don't have much room up here on my desk today because I am getting ready to get everything mailed off for my uh, D stash with May May Made It's group. And uh, so I've kind of got stuff piled all over. So, anyway, here goes. First mess will be me pouring this coffee. And. I don't know if I want to use a whole cup of coffee. Maybe I'll use a half a teaspoon of vanilla because I'm only using about half a cup of coffee. So, all right, there's the coffee. Yummy. Reminds me of back in 2000 and uh, I was it 2000 and uh, I think nine. I ten. I took my my brother for his birthday. I took him on a trip out to the Black Hills in South Dakota. And if you've never been there and are thinking of coming to South Dakota, that's the place to go. It is gorgeous out there. So different than in the east end of the state where I live. It's flat here with a few little hills and lots of farm fields. You get out there and it's hills and oh it's so beautiful. Deadwood. Oh my gosh. Deadwood is like my favorite place in this state. If I had to move anywhere it would be Deadwood. Oh what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful town. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we stayed at a campground um, in a tent no less to save money so we'd have more for our vacation and uh, we had a lot of fun doing it um, but uh, we woke up one morning and we couldn't get a fire lit to make coffee so I told him I said well let's drive into Rapid City and see what we can find for coffee and we stopped in the Nexon station because it happened to be the first gas station we came to and we uh, we uh, I'm, I'm now mixing my I'm mixing a half a teaspoon of vanilla into this coffee so I don't know what that's going to do. I'm not going to taste it. It does not smell good. <laughs> it doesn't. Um, ah! And that is me dump, almost dumping my vanilla. Make a mess, right? Yeah. Um, okay, anyway, so we stopped and we each got coffee and a donut. The donuts were, were really good. Very good. Um, the coffee, however, left a lot to be desired. Um, we went back to the campground. I could not drink this stuff. I'm not a real strong coffee drinker this you could walk on it was that bad so we went down to the restroom and we uh, I poured out half of mine and put water in it you know and I still couldn't drink it that's how bad this stuff was I mean they must have used a three pound can for a 12 cup coffee maker I don't know but this stuff was horrible so I dumped out more of the water coffee mix down to a quarter cup filled it with water halfway I still couldn't drink it he drank his half, he, he dumped his halfway too. I mean, he loves coffee. He couldn't drink it, but he, he did drink the, the half and half water and coffee mix, but oh my God, I've never had such horrible coffee in my life. Ew. Anyway, back to the mess. Okay, now I've got several types of paper here I wanted to try. Um, I've got just a plain white, lightweight paper. It's a little lighter than a copy paper. Um, I've got some watercolor paper that I cut up and I'm, I'm just doing little squares because I you know I don't know where this is gonna go and I didn't really wanna you know do a lot got some of that like kind of onion skin like paper I bought the other day and uh, then I've got just a little bit of a cream colored lighter weight I got I guess this is the copy paper the white this is the paper I got the other day it's a little lighter than copy paper so maybe it's like a stationary paper or something like that anyway now, there's two different ways they did theirs. Um, one, they just dipped the paper in the water 
and or into the coffee mixer and you know just let it set for a little while pulled it out and the other one they crumpled it up so you'd have those you know where it would kind of settle into the lines where it's crumpled so I'm just going to take this old paper first the off-white and I'm going to dip that into the coffee mixture and I'm just going to let it sit here for just a bit and my kitty is howling in the background because I won't let my kitty in so yeah she's just going to have to get over it and I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference in the color but we'll see what happens when and I'm going to bake these um, because I really like it when you bake the papers so anyway this has gone to just slightly darker so I'm not you know we'll see what happens and then I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do a piece of it crumpled up also and, and see what that looks like so I'm just gonna crumple up this paper and that's old paper so if it rips I'm not gonna be surprised it's actual vintage type paper not not real old but you know older probably probably a little younger than I am and I'm not really seeing a whole lot there either um so I think I'm gonna recrumple it now that it's wet and try it one more time if I dip it in there while it's crumpled I don't know you guys I'm just playing I'm just having a little fun today see what I can end up oh now that's more interesting that's definitely more interesting I kind of like that I've got very bright light in here today because I've got the room light oh I'm liking that I can't wait to show you guys this one is done all right on to the onion skin now type paper now this I know you can't get too wet because I did some of it the other day for a uh, mini junk journal I was doing and uh, so I kind of know what it's gonna you know look like you can't get it too wet though because it will disintegrate um, poke it in just a little bit longer there and like it did the other day it has darkened it just a bit and I've got coffee running all over okay so I'm gonna lay that out I've got a cookie sheet here with some parchment on it and if my papers overlap that's cool I'm good with that because I really kind of like the look of it when it overlaps um, you know you get the little stains from the other papers on it you know you'll get a corner here or you know something like that and I think that looks kind of neat so before this gets too Oh, I'm making a mess. You're not coming in. You can go somewhere else, kitty. Okay, so this is what we're getting with this, and I didn't think the crinkles would be, and I'm, I really don't want to crinkle this again because I'm scared it's going to rip. It's really light, fine. So I'm going to put that down. I think I'm going to put it, well, it doesn't matter where I put it. I know what they are. Um, okay, now I'm going to try the watercolor paper, and this is, this is a pretty heavy paper, so it's, we'll see what this does. It's a watercolor paper, so it should absorb color, right? And I probably, I probably should be leaving this in a little longer, but uh, for the sake of the video and moving things along, I wonder if this is gonna smell like when I bake it with the vanilla in it. I toyed with using soy sauce too, but I thought maybe vanilla and soy sauce together would be a little extreme. I don't know, but yeah. Anyway, it has, it's kind of yellowed the paper. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so we're going to put that down, and then I'm going to try to crumple in a piece of it, and I think I may get it wet first because it's very, very stiff. So I think we're going to dunk it in and see what happens here. Let's see if I can crumple it. Boy, maybe little bits at a time. Just kind of fold it for now. That's really thick, heavy paper. Oh, we're in the middle of a minor warm-up here, but now it's cooling off again, and that was supposed to happen yesterday and today, and now they've moved it today. Tomorrow it's supposed to be cooler now. You know, they don't know. Oh, this is kind of cool. Just by folding it, I got that design in it, so I think I'm going to leave that and just see what happens with that one. My fingernails are terrible looking, but this is a polish Zoe got me for my birthday. It's pink with blue in it. Um, I like it, but it's gritty. Um feels kind of gritty um, it's like sand kind of and it, it peels off really easy so I'm gonna have to definitely go get a top coat and put over it because otherwise it doesn't stay on at all but I like it it's bright okay now I'm just doing the regular copy paper I realize this probably isn't very exciting I'm really gonna make a mess in here though and as you can see like you know like I said I should probably leave this in a little bit longer but for the sake of the video 
And so this is the copy paper. It's just lightly yellowed. Um, and I'm going to crumple a piece of it too. I'm going to soak it first. But then I, this is a thinner, thinner weight copy paper. It's not, not your average copy paper. So we'll see what happens here when I... Oh, this wants to... Yeah. This probably was not a good idea, but boy, do I have some neat folds in this. Ah, it's ripping on me. All right. Check that one. Try it again. All right, let's do this again. I'm not going to dip it so long this time before I crinkle it. It's going to dip it. Boy. I don't know. It's not your average copy paper. That's all I know. Okay. And, again, that's what that looks like. I don't know if you can see it. I've got some terrible glare going on. So I'm going to lay that one out there. And I th <laughs> I'm getting coffee all over my papers. All right. I think we're going to call it quits on the coffee experiment here. Let's let me dump this out. There we go. Now I'm sitting there going, I should go get the soy sauce. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to go get the soy sauce. That's not going to happen. All right. The second. I'm going to dump this coffee too before I knock it over. Yeah. All right. So our, the next one I'm going to do. I need a glass bowl for this one because I'm going to be using food color. You know what my hands are going to look like. Not going to be pretty, but I've got I've got a lot of things I want to try with this actually. Um, the first one, well, it called for food color and water and vegetable oil, and I tried this a long time ago and didn't have much luck with it. But I'm going to try it again. So what we need is some water, and we need God who washed that dish. Um, all right, we need some water, and it's just enough to fill the bottom of our dish, okay? And then into that, we want to put some vegetable oil. I'm not sure how much you use, so I may end up running back out for some more vegetable oil because I want to try a couple, three things. Okay, there's some that should be enough. And I'm going to stir that with a fork, I think. That's why I brought the fork in here. I know oil and water don't mix, but, you know, just to kind of try to distribute the oil a little more evenly. Okay, now, food coloring. And I think, oh, yeah, blue, I think. We'll just, I'm just, I think I'm going to do a light blue background. That's what, aha, uh -huh, my lid, I opened the wrong end of the box, my lid came off. See that? Look, make a mess, right? So I'm just going to put, and they say if you put the oil and water and food color mixture into a jar and mix it up, that it will go better, that it, that it, it mixes better, but uh, like I said, I'm trying to save time here, so uh, they also said you could use a fork, so ah, look, blue fingers! Ew. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be blue. Oh, as if Dr. Draken said on Kim Possible, if you're blue on the outside and blue on the inside, then you become evil like him. Yeah, something like that. Yes, I. My kids watched Kim Possible. And that was after they were grown, so yeah. Anyway, I've got this nice, kind of light blue color there, and you can see the oil in there and stuff. And then what they said to do, and I've got neon colors here that I want to play with. I've got green, I've got a bright green, bright pink, bright blue, and... I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. Well, oh, I guess that's more of like a magenta, maybe. This is a pink. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to do what they say now, and I'm going to put drops of the food coloring around into my... Over here, boy. One drop of food coloring goes a long ways. Okay. I'm going to be colorful. All right. I'm going <laughs> to, yeah, oh, I'm going to put, I think, one drop of the magenta in, and I think a little bit of the blue, and I'm getting this everywhere, I don't want it, ah, alrighty, I've now managed to stain my countertop, oh well, it's crappy anyway, of course I've already got a blue background, so, a little bit of the bright green, I don't know what this is going to do, I'm not sure, I had some tweezers here. What did I do with those? A couple drops of the bright green. 
Technically, the colors shouldn't really blend together because of the oil. Well, I'm going to see. Okay, I have tweezers. These tweezers freak me out because they're backwards. You squeeze them to open them. Weird. And I've got coffee stain paper. So first, I'm going to do what they said, and I'm just going to kind of swirl. Now, this is where it's going to go bad for me if it goes bad at all. I'm just going to kind of swirl. I don't know if you guys can see this. My colors are kind of mixing. This could be really interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to try to zoom in here a little bit. And I know right now it just kind of looks like a brown mess. Oops, sorry about the fingers. I can only move this camera out so far, so. Yeah, right now it looks like a... Coming to you looks like a brown mess. Um, oh, no, 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 no. You weren't even supposed to get in here. Out. Behave. You can be here, you just behave. Okay, so right now it's kind of a purpley, swirly mess, so I may have done this wrong, but while it's swirling, you can kind of see the other colors. So what I want to do is just dip this in. I'm just going by their directions. Ah. Yeah. Okay, this is not going to work well. Okay, I'm just going to... You're supposed to kind of, I guess I'm going to get really messy here. And I'm not coming out with what they came out with at all. It's kind of supposed to dip it under the surface of the water, so maybe I stirred it too much. And I'm just kind of supposed to do that until you see the color come, come through, but this is what I'm getting. I'm not getting, you can see there's a pink and a purple and a red, but I'm not getting, I mean it looks cool but it's not what I was anticipating. Okay, so, put down the parchment paper. Let it sit there. And actually, I'm not getting to be too much. I'm not really getting to be a mess with... No, you can't be here. You have to get down and... If you want to be in here, you have to... Oh, I'm sorry. The cat is in here and driving me crazy. All right, pitch this one. We'll try it again. I've got a bucket here behind me because I don't have a sink, so... Paper towel here, wipe this out so I don't have the same colors. Ah, oh. well, I promised you a mess on Monday, so guess what you're getting? Oh, it's a coffee cup. Okay, so I'm gonna have a little bit of the pink in the bottom. Just uh, this time, I'm putting less wa water, a little less oil. I think I think I may have had too much oil, and it, you know, they didn't say. I didn't specify how much oil you were supposed to use, so. And even my blue background is gone on this one. I mean, you can see like one little spot of blue up in the corner, but that's it. So I'm probably doing something wrong, but I'm playing, I'm having fun, so. Let's go with the light green this time. Let me just go with one, one drop of green. I'm just using a regular green. All right, I'm gonna get something out of this yet. I am, it's gonna happen. Okay, you probably won't. I mean, it's me. All right, I'm going to try a little bit of the bright blue. One drop of the bright blue. And I think I'm going to stir that. Just kind of swirl it. I think I may have swirled too much, or I had too many colors in here. Oh, that's kind of cool looking. I hope you can see that. And I'm going to try a little bit of the magenta in there with that, because this should be really pretty if it works out. I wish I could get a half drop. Oh, that's a small drop. Okay, I think I was mixing. I shouldn't have been mixing. So I'm just going to kind of work that into my blue a little bit. I'm going to try to work some of my blue into my magenta. All right, we're going to go with that, okay? I hope you can see what I've got. I really can't zoom in too much further with this. Um, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it on a regular piece of paper this time, okay? So we're just going to put that in. And we're going to kind of swirl it around on there. That's what they kind of said to do. Okay, I got it. You have to kind of swirl it just right on the surface. And then lift it up. Oh, isn't that pretty? I like that. Cool, I'm going to do another one of those. And I'm finding it's working best on the regular paper. I'm going to try this onion skin like paper and see what that does. I'm just going to put it in there. I'm just going to kind of swirl it real easy. Yeah, my colors are blending now. Just too bad because that's really pretty the way it was coming out. Yeah, see, so this one's just coming out kind of blue and spotted. Um, 
So I think what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to start needing to stack these coffee dyed ones up because I want some more room on here. And of course I'm going to get a little bit of coffee on my other ones, but... Oh well, we're playing right, we're just having fun here. Let's see what we can make. Um, I think I'm going to... Before I call it quits on this one, this is really unique because it's getting transparent, almost like, um, oh, what's the word? Not the parchment paper, but, um, I'm going to set this down. Where am I measuring spoon? Um, oh, not vellum. Well, kind of like vellum. It's getting kind of see-through. It's really kind of cool. Okay, so I'm just going to put a drop of the pink in there. And I'm just going to lightly swirl that around. And get the color there. It's moving out. The colors are moving out. Oh, I've got the most pretty peacock blue in here. Beautiful. I am liking that. I wish I could get it all to just... Okay, so I'm going to put this in right up on top and just kind of... I'm not picking up the... Obviously, it's a one-time deal, maybe. I'm not picking it up, but it, it is a really pretty blue, so I'm going to keep that and see what happens there, because you can see a little bit of the pink coming through, and I'm going to... Oh, this is too much fun. I could do this all day. Pitch that, wipe the bowl out, try to get as much of the color out as I can, it's going to have to soak and be bleached or something, but, okay, now my other thought was, and I don't know if this is going to work or not, but we're going to try it, um, what if I use water, like I did before, and then, I use oil. I'm not going to put as much oil. I think I'm getting too much oil. So we're going to put just a little less oil in there. Maybe another drop. There we go. Okay, I'm going to stir that around with my fork. And I'm getting a little blue in it, but I'm not going to worry about that. Um, now my thought was, what if I used a little alcohol? Actually, if I use alcohol, I'm scared my bowl is going to be permanently colored. Um, hmm. Sprays. Maybe a little bit of sprays. I got some Heidi Swap here. Glimmer mist. We'll try it. Kitty's out there howling. Because Kitty wanted it in. So I'm going to try to spray right. This is new. This is amethyst. Okay, that's kind of cool. It's kind of making it. Oh, it's kind of separating on me. So I think we'll just spray that one, and is there a color I want to put with it? Hmm. No, not that that's nearly black. That's not going to work. I think we'll try a little bit of Tattered Angels Mantis Glimmer Mist. It's supposed to be this color. It doesn't quite come out that color. Trust me. I think I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there with it. I'm probably going to be bleaching this bowl. Eh, not what I'd hoped for. The glimmer mist and stuff is actually sinking to the bottom of the bowl. But anyway, we're going to try it. So here it goes. We're going to see what comes out of this. Other than me scrubbing my bowl forever to get the colors out of it. Now the oil's not coming through with this. Like, Yeah, that's not really what I was hoping for here. You can see a little bit of the green on that side. And the oil's not even soaking through the paper like with the other one. So, all right, live and learn. Let's get rid of that, and I'll try to get this out of my bowl before it sits up in there. I'm going to do one more with the food color, and then I think we're probably going to stop because obviously you guys get the idea of what I'm doing here. And I will come back when I'm done. Water. I will come back when I'm, when, after I've gotten it baked, and I'll show you how that turned out, how it looks after it's baked. But oil. Sorry about the clanging there. I don't have a lot of room right now. I'm getting everything done for that de-stash and I'm really excited about it. I think we're going to go with this bright green. Just a little bit. It'd be so much better to have an eyedropper for this. Okay, this is going to be our background color. And I'm not having a lot of luck keeping my background color, so maybe next time I will use a jar or two. I'm going to try to make this really bright. So I'm going to put in just one drop of the blue over here. Come on. There we go. And a drop of 
have the magenta over here and maybe a little bit of pink. I'm just having too much fun. It's like being a little kid playing with stuff. I'm sure my mother would have probably rather upset with me if I'd done this with her stuff, but and again, she was pretty good about letting us experiment with stuff. She always said, you never know unless you try. And I'm trying to get the purple or magenta, whatever color it is, to kind of come over here into my other colors. Okay, that's like, yeah, that's really... I know it probably looks kind of bad to you guys, but I think it looks kind of cool. So I'm just going to stick this on top this time and just let it soak up the way it's in there. Try not to, where's my tweezers? I try not to disturb this too much when I pull it out. And they say with this that the normal time leaving it in there is about when uh, when you can start seeing the oil come up across the back of the... And that came out really, really pastel and kind of muddy. So, on this paper. Kind of looks like a fake vellum though. We'll see what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, so yeah, I've got a little bit of this. So. I think I'm just going to use up whatever's in here. You know, they said you kind of swirl your paper around, but I'm just not having luck with that. So we'll just see what happens by just laying this plain paper in here. Oops. Uh -huh, I got it against the side of my bowl. Well, it's kind of pretty, but your colors tend to run together. I don't know. We'll see. I kind of like that one, though. I'm really kind of excited. I may have to do this with bigger pieces of paper. Um... I'm going to try one more piece on a piece of my, uh, one more little bit on a piece of my watercolor paper. And I'm starting to see the, I don't know if you can see if I hold this up, you can see the oil coming through on the back of it. And they say that when the oil starts coming through on the back of it, that I have a feeling this is going to be really brown. Oh no, huh? Oh, that's pretty. I like that. And we're going to do a few more of those. I've got the stuff here, so I'm going to use up the paper and the uh, textured side there. I might as well go ahead and use up what I can here. And I'll find these for all these little pieces of paper that I'm making. Be a cute for cards. Or like I said, I'm right now, right now I'm kind of into this junk journal deal and mini albums and minis are my favorite, but the junk journals are they're they're getting there real quick. Um yeah, you could use it for cards. You could do big pieces of paper and, you know, do your own background paper and that kind of stuff. Oh, this one's curling up. Ooh, well, that's kind of... Ah! Okay, well, it's kind of a neat effect till I did that. So hopefully they'll... This is getting pretty muddy looking, so I'm not sure what we're going to get out of it now. I'll throw it in. Maybe I can get something out of it yet. I don't know. I don't think stirring this will help. I don't know. That's me just chattering away. So yeah, it's it's really neat. Um, I know it looks like a really big mess, but really it's just me and I'm messy. I think if you kept it, you know, you could keep it more contained. Probably do it in your kitchen, you know, like maybe over your sink or something. Definitely put stuff down because of the food coloring. Oh, I just got that on there. Um, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to try swirling this and see if I can get the colors to come back. But you know, this is this really, it's fun, and if you do it right, and I mean, I must have done some of them right because I got that really cool effect, especially like this blue one over here in the corner. Um, yeah. So, if you do it right, I think you could really come out with some really pretty papers. So, I think this is something I'm going to be exploring a little more, see what happens. See if I can get it down to where it's really right, but yeah, I think it's definitely, definitely something that's worth doing. Okay, let's see how that one turned out. It's kind of, yeah, see my colors are getting pretty muddy now, so they're just kind of coming out with like a couple different shades, but I mean, even that's neat in itself. Try one more regular piece of paper, and this, this is the off-white paper, so I'm not sure what this is going to be like, but I'm just going to set it on there just long enough to let it just capture the top of it. I can see some colors coming through, but I still think it's probably going to be pretty muddy. Oh, these tweezers are terrible. And you know, the best part is that with the oil, yeah, see, this is going to be, but I like it. It's a gray and a pink, and I like gray and pink together, so I 
am probably going to call today's little adventure a marginal success. See, it's got gray and pink on it. And I will bake these, and then I will be back and finish the video. So I think we're going to call it quits here. I hope you had some fun. Nothing else. I have blue fingers. Anyway, I'll be back when I've got these baked and show you the final result. Bye for now. I'm back. Um, and I have the results of my experiment. Now what I did was I baked this paper on a piece of parchment on a cookie sheet in my oven at 250 degrees um, for 20 minutes. Um, I only went to 250 degrees because I don't know at what temperature oil, cooking oil, starts to smoke at. Um, I know motor oil starts to smoke about 350, so I did 250 for 20 minutes, um, and it got the job done. Um, I learned a lot on this. Um, number one, I learned that, uh, okay, so let me get my papers separated here. I should have done that before I got in here. Let's regular. Okay. Uh, sorry I'm talking to myself I do this a lot sometimes I think I'm the only one who listens to myself okay so first I did the coffee with the vanilla in it was supposed to give it a more grungy look and because I did not want this video to get too long I probably didn't soak it long enough and I haven't pressed these yet they're still in their crinkled form um, okay first of all the watercolor paper um, this is what came out like that um, you can see, uh, maybe if I had soaked it longer, really though, I don't see the vanilla added anything. Oh, I'm betting that's blurring because it's white. I'll take the white background out. There we go. Um, yeah, so I'm not seeing that did a whole lot. Um, here's the other piece I did in the watercolor paper. paper. Blech. I did get kind of a neat diamond pattern the way I folded it, but I don't know. I think you probably do the same thing with regular coffee and not put the vanilla in. Um, here it is on the regular thin white paper. You know, I'm hoping my camera is focusing. I know my brother was telling me something about if you have a really light background, the camera has nothing to focus in on because it's just white. So, yeah, this has something to do with that. And here's just some more of it. I think the next two pieces, I think, are the ones that were on the. Yeah, see, there it goes. It's doing the blurry thing. And that's just because it has nothing to focus in on because it's just white and it's trying to... Well, that's what he said, so I trust him. He knows cameras. This is the... Uh, this was the off-white paper. And as you can see, it just... Really not a whole lot there. Maybe it's a little grungier, maybe not. I know, use your own judgment. Um, I think plain coffee works just fine. On that one, and then this was that uh, onion skin kind of paper. It's cool, but it's, like I said, I think regular coffee, just coffee dyeing. I don't think you have to add the vanilla. I think I am going to try the soy sauce though sometime because that's darker. Now, what I'm really excited about, though, is the paper I did with the oil. I am really, really, really excited about this because some of it, me, I didn't have it right. Um, but when I get done, I'll tell you what I learned from this little experiment. So, here are the pieces of watercolor paper, and I mean... Nothing spectacular, kind of neat. That one's got some little dots on it, runs. Kind of cool. Um, and there's just another piece where it got some lines on it. Um, again, nothing fantastic. It's kind of pretty, but yeah. Okay, so. Oh, and this one. This one kind of turned out really pretty, but I think this was the first one I did, too. I So, yeah. Um, but what I'm really, really, really excited about, okay, Yes, I've lost it. Um, <laughs> but I'm really excited about this. Um, this is the stuff that I did. Let me see. On, I got all those same papers. No, this is on regular paper. Do I have another one of those? I can't remember what I did. Okay. This is the stuff on just the regular thin paper. This is how this came out. Be kind of neat if I had... No, you're not supposed to be here. I let you in here if you'd be good. Uh huh. Kitty's clinging today. Um, but yeah, um, that's on that regular, just thin, little thinner than copy paper. Um, this, I believe, is on the watercolor paper. That's the first one I did that I thought I had it all messed up, but actually, it turned out really, really cool. I think I like it. So then we get on to 
This is this this did not work out. Okay, this is the one I attempted with the uh, shimmers and that not work out. All right, so this is what I'm excited about, though, people. And I believe I believe this one too is on a regular sheet of paper. This one I like. This one really turned out well. This was after I figured out that you stir it slowly and you don't you know really mix you know you don't stir like crazy like you're whipping up a cake um so yeah i'm really kind of happy with this one um both sides of it came out um it makes the paper where the oil sits almost transparent which is really cool because it kind of gives it a, a vellum effect i'm going to call it a poor man's vellum um but what's really really neat is that onion skin paper that i used and uh, i'm going to tell you why because you know, the glassine envelopes, okay? Everybody likes those. Um, I haven't seen a lot of them around here, but with the oil, and this one did not turn out right, but with the oil, I think you'll agree, this looks a lot like, and I don't know if you can see it on there, but it looks a lot like glassine, okay? Um, it's very see-through. It looks a lot like glassine. Um, let me put it, and if I put it up against another color, if that would help, maybe... To see it, there's a stencil that's green, I don't know, but if you can see, you can see the stencil right through it. So, possibly, this is like a poor man's glassine, right? Cool. Um, this one also didn't turn out exactly like I wanted it, but then again, we have that really transparent see-through. And again, I'll show you if there's a stencil behind it, and you can see right through it to the stencil. Awesome. Really excited about that. Kitty is now helping me, and this one I do believe is on another piece of just that real thin paper, and it, it turned out really cool too. So, now, what I learned from this, well first of all, I learned that I think you could get away with just regular coffee, no problem. Okay, I don't know why my video is shaky so bad, I guess, I think I'm moving this, so I'm going to get it out of the way, there we go. Okay, coffee thing, yeah, just use regular coffee, same the vanilla. Okay, now, what I learned about the other, um... First of all, make sure you bake it at around 250. Um, and I mean, keep an eye on it. You know, ovens vary in temperature. My stove is new, so I'm hoping the temperatures are right on it. Um, you get a really cool look with a thin paper, um, like so. I was really pleased with that. But this is where I got the glassine. Awesome. Now, when you take this paper, what I've learned, okay, is you don't want a ton of oil. The first time I did it, I had too much oil in it. That was one of my mistakes. Um, so, yeah, we don't want too much oil. Um, so I'm thinking that, you know, and, and it says just line the bottom with your, you know, just, just line the bottom with your uh, water. You know, just enough so that, you know, you can, you can dip something into it. Um, I would say for that probably like three, four drops of oil, probably about three, no more than that. Don't use a lot of oil. Um, it moves your food coloring around too much. Um, food coloring, drop in different sections and lightly swirl it together. Don't sit there and swirl it really good like I did because... See, kitty, looky, looky, love, look, look. This is my brother's cat. She's over visiting. I have her daughter and they are not getting along, so... I kind of let her in here with me if she'd be good, but she's not... Well, she's happy right now. She's on my lap. Um, anyway... Swirl it lightly and easily around. Just kind of lay your paper on top. Watch for the oil to start coming up on the back. You can see the little spots of oil. Don't lick that. Um, and when, when it starts looking like there's getting quite a bit of oil on the back, then, you know, just take it out of there and put it on your sheet that, that you want to bake it on or, or if you just want to let it dry. Okay, I also learned that in the baking process, when you take these out with the oil, they, some of them will still have oil on them because your paper's not going to absorb all of your oil. Um, I just took a paper towel, I put my paper on the paper towel, and I just blotted it. Get out of there. I'm sorry about the kitty. Um, I'm babysitting her today, and like I said, her and her daughter are not getting along, so she's, I let her in here with me. Um, anyway, and then I just blotted it until all the oil came off, just kind of rubbed it, you know, real easy like, and... Got all the oil off, and now, you know, it may, I mean, I would I would recommend probably leaving it dry overnight, even after you've taken it out of the oven and you've blotted it between a couple pieces of paper towel. Um, I have done this before, and the paper, I did it before on a long time ago, did not 
have, you know, an oily problem afterwards. Um, so, yeah, I would say do that. Um, on the regular paper, um, this that thin paper I used, it did come out a little oily too, and I blotted that off. Now, I think with this onion skin type paper, you know, it's going to it's gonna stay a little oily a little longer, so I would definitely leave that between some paper towels with some weight on it overnight. But this right here doesn't seem to have feel oily at all, but I still might do it just to be safe, okay, because I don't want to ruin a project, and I don't think it will. Um, the stuff on the watercolor paper, feel no oil on that at all. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much what I've learned from this. I've learned this is a cool way to make your glassine, people. Really cool, you know, and you can just make an envelope with it. Um, if you're using the onion skin paper, do not dip it too long. The wetter it gets, the bigger chance it's got of ripping. Um, so you kind of want to be really careful handling it. But I'll tell you what, it's an awesome look. Okay, and the last thing I learned is, wear gloves. Like, wear gloves. Yeah. Because I've got blue and pink fingers for... A while. <laughs> At least I match my nail polish. Um, anyway, I'm hoping I'll scrub off in the shower tonight. But anyway, yeah, that's my experiment. That's my mess for today. I hope you at least enjoyed watching me get messy, if nothing else. Um, I will be back sometime this week, probably with a project share, I think, since I'm really getting into these junk journals now, and, and especially the file folder ones. So I'll probably be back with a uh, project share. I'm making one for a friend so for Christmas. Um, so yeah. Um, anyway, thank you for joining me. Thank you for, you know, watching me make a mess. And uh, I hope you all have a good day.